Good morning, it's Monday, May 24th, 6.15 a.m. That's where I ended up. It's a quiet night, it slept very well. Mm, it's 8.23. Uh, finally getting back on trail. <clears throat> it was fun this morning getting to sit around and chat. I'm leaving a little ahead of everybody else, but they'll catch me. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day today. I'm looking forward to the hike. This is still a blue trail. I've got to get back over to the Appalachian Trail. It's about, uh, it's a little after 9 a.m., just walking along, enjoying my breakfast. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, I met another tarp camper last night, or actually this morning. I've met him before on trail, his, his trail name is Android, and first time I talked to him, I noticed that he had a keen um, attention to detail. We were talking gear, and he knew all of the um, weights and ounces for the particular gear that we were talking about and all the specs, and I was really impressed with that. thought I was one of the few nerds out here, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, he uh, came over this morning, and he was asking me about the bugs, and, and, uh, and then he told me he was tarp camping as well. And sure enough, I went over there and checked his set out, uh, his set up out, and I was uh, really surprised. He had a Hyperlite Mountain Gear tarp, and he had a uh, piece of Tyvek, a bivy, and an air pad. And he, uh, his tarp, he's done exactly what I've done and cut the line locks off of it and used uh, the Andrew Skirka method of just tying the lines to the tarp with the bowline hitch and uh, anyway I thought that was really cool so he's the third uh, including my own um, tarp that I've seen you know hyperlite tarp that I've seen on this trip so that was cool I've seen a couple of z-packs tarps and then I've seen a couple of sil nylon tarps um, the z-packs both the tarps of us are the 7x9 Dyneema so anyway, it's always neat to see another tarp camper, and I love to see what they do and how they're doing it. He's uh, He said he started, so Android said he started the trail with a duplex, and then he wanted to experiment a little bit, so he got his tarp set up out. And then he's, uh, in a couple of weeks, he's meeting his girlfriend. His girlfriend's going to bring him his uh, hammock set up, and he's going to experiment with that a little bit. So he said, you know, uh all your shakedown hikes you know it's hard to hard to get the same experience as you do on a long trail which i totally agree with um you know everybody's set up is perfect when it's 70 degrees and and their experience is perfect with it so anyway it'll be interesting to hear uh what his outcome is after all three setups and and doing it for an extended period of time on the trail I need to talk goals too. Um, I have been heading towards Bland. I have, when I started this morning, there was 20.5 miles to Bland. And so my goal is to, my rough goal is to do about 15 today and then uh, do the last little leg the following day, which will be Tuesday. Today's Monday. Um, and then I uh, should get into the post office midday, of which I'll have two boxes to deal with. One I'm going to pick up for resupply. The other one I'm going to bump it on to Parisburg, where I will meet Betsy. And uh, we'll just pick up the box, and then she can recycle it and send it to me later on. So, that's my goals and you know I, I guess I could do the 20.5 or whatever today and get to bland but why push yourself you know I don't really have any 
driving reason to do that. So I'd rather stick with my 15. And I've been doing 15s regularly. I'm feeling better and better at the end of the day. And uh, so, and, and usually I've been able to slide something in the middle of the day, like uh, food at the Mexican restaurant or a shower or whatever, and still able to get my goal comfortably. So it's working well. It's 1030 and uh, for about the last hour I've been hiking along with, uh, or I was hiking along with Android and Tony. Interesting guys. Good conversation. Um, Android is an electrical engineer. Tony's a mechanical engineer. We talked about packs, tarps, diesel engines, turbochargers software development project management all sorts of good stuff and i probably was two and a half miles an hour which is a lot faster than i'm used to going so it was good so it is coming up on 11 o'clock just hiking along here thinking and uh the uh bugs are starting to turn on pretty good Notice a significant change in the last couple days. And I uh, hear there's a little bit of a cooler spell coming on, which will change that temporarily. But um, I've been thinking about asking Betsy to bring my bug bivy. And I had another thought that I'd like to try. Um, watching Jupiter Hikes, um, he introduced me to the idea of the umbrella condom which is a funny name for basically taking a bug net and slipping an umbrella inside it and opening the umbrella up using the umbrella to basically space the bug net around you so that you have a, a little place to uh, to eat or read or do whatever you're going to do in the evenings and then basically the rest of you is covered up by your sleeping gear. So um, he didn't invent that. There's a guy named Lent who is a triple, triple crowner. And uh, he's the one who came up with that originally. But I have a couple of hammock bug nets that are... In all, they're, you know, it's about 6 or 6.9 or something like that ounces. It's over 6 ounces in the stuff sack. So, I'm going to ask Betsy to bring me one of those. And uh, a pair of scissors. Basically, what I'm going to do is cut it in half. And then cut some off the end so I can bunch up the end. And then leave one end of it open. And I'll basically have kind of a, a dome made out of uh, no CM bug net and uh, I can use like the umbrella condom or I can just tie it up and uh, or just lay it over me and then space it with a stick or whatever you know use a couple lines to suspend it but I think that'll be a lighter and maybe more flexible option because I don't really need to be completely encased in the bug bivy the bug bivy's light it's like five and a half or six ounces but it's kind of restricting as well you basically go in that thing to sleep and that's it so uh i think i'm going to experiment a little bit and use the bug bivy as a fallback um, and if i can use the umbrella condom comfortably then uh, that's going to be it's basically going to take the place of my um, base layer shirt in terms of weight. Um, the base layer shirt is like 8 ounces or something like that. It's a merino wool shirt. It's very warm, but it's, but it's also heavy. I'm planning to offload it on my next uh, visit with Betsy. And then I'll exchange it for the bug net. And that'll make me a little bit lighter. Either way, either if I have the umbrella condom or the the uh, bug baby, I'll still be lighter and then uh, be protected against the bugs if I need it. I uh, didn't really need it last night. 
even the night before when I was in the cow field and woke up with ants all over me, it wasn't like a bad experience or anything. I just brushed them off and went on. Um, but it's apparent that they are definitely more active and going to continue to be more active. So I need to start uh, thinking about addressing that. Also, for reference, the uh, area that I camped last night was um, mile 571.3. I knew these guys would catch up with me. Is that your ring of flowers, Adrian? Oh. Is that Brad's? <laughs> oh, I'm saying Brad and I'm looking at you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, these guys, I, I didn't think it'd take them long to catch up with me, so I headed out a little bit early. And uh, I think, how far have we gone so far? Alan, you said 4.7? Yeah, okay, not bad. Here comes Tony cruising down the trail. And check out this guy's rig over here. That's pretty awesome. He's going to the bowl. I'm not sure about that, but it sounds interesting. Burke's Garden. Burke's Garden. Cool. Sounds like fun. Hiking along with Brad, Alan, Mama Bear, and Kim. They're a little bit ahead. I let off the gas just a little bit. But, uh, good stuff today. We're marching on towards the next water source, which is about three miles or so away. So somehow it is 2 p.m. and I'm walking along with Mama Bear and Kim. And uh, this is like an oasis, it's awesome. Washing our feet off, filtering some water. I think Kim's, uh, I'm sorry, Mama Bear has it figured out. She's got a camp chair. <laughs> But, uh, this, yeah, this is fantastic. If, if I was staying here, I would totally go for a swim right here. It's like nature's bathtub. <clears throat> so we're back underway. And we were worried that Brad and Alan were way ahead. But turns out they turned off and went to the shelter. And they just came right back to where we were getting started. So worked out just right. Alan was stopped to soak his feet? Yeah. Okay. But he was able to do that at the shelter? Yeah. Oh, perfect. It is um, 4.28 in the afternoon. I'm back to walking by myself. Um, have been for quite a while now. I have 1.8 miles to get to a stream up here. And I think... There's a big bunch of plan to stay at the stream. I'm going to evaluate my options, my mileage, and everything, and see if that corresponds with uh, what I'd like to do today. I'm thinking that I probably want to go a little bit past that. But uh, maybe my last opportunity to get water before Bland, Virginia. So uh, I need to sit down and have a look at that before I decide to go on. Um, I could press on to Bland. I think there's like eight, eight more miles, nine more miles to Bland. But, uh, I don't see that in the cards for today. So, I'm going to play a conservative stop, get up and go to Bland tomorrow. Hit the post office. I've got one resupply box to pick up, one box to forward, and then, uh, and then it's on to uh, Parisburg. I'm probably going to stay the night in the hostel tomorrow night and charge my batteries. Um, I need to do that because I don't have enough battery to get the whole week and go to uh, Parisburg. And I need to be able to video, communicate, gut hook, and all those things that we're dependent on our phones for. So, um, and of course, I can always use a shower and a hot cup of coffee. So I think that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. All right, made it down to the river, to the road. And I think this and maybe one other stream are the last major water sources before Bland. 
just halfway down there and enjoying the water. And look, the rest of my homies. Hey, what's up? Hey. Yay. How long have you guys been here? I forgot the video, but um, we ended up stopping at the, uh, the river where everybody was dipping over there. We went a little bit past it. There's a real nice water source and there's not anything until you get to Bland. So we decided to just hang it up right here. Stopped at about 6 p.m. And uh, we've just been hanging out and having a good evening. So I'm cowboy camping again. I'll film my setup uh, first thing in the morning. Good morning. It is 6.04 a.m. Tuesday, May 25th. I'm sitting here underneath the tarp. I'm just now getting up. There's um, tents all around me. The um, goal today is to get up, get moving, and get to land. Get resupplied. And get down the road towards Parisburg. So here's my setup for last night. It's just a quick lazy just lean to with the tarp. I had heard there was supposed to be a chance of rain today. Didn't know if it would start in the morning. Got no cell phone signal here so I just threw something up real quick to uh, make sure I didn't get rained on just in case. It is 7.09, getting a good early start. I'm gonna stop up here and get some water. And then uh, I think it's 6.8 miles to get to the road crossing where you go to Bland. And then later on I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get into Bland because it's a few miles from where the intersection is. So I'm gonna, when I get some service again, I will Google or something and find a shuttle. There's a hotel, or a motel actually, that has a, uh, says something about a shuttle service. They're on I-77, right next to Bland. So I'm gonna probably give them a call later and see if it's a free shuttle. See if I can put something together. I'm trying to be quiet because everybody around here is still sleeping. I'm happy to get out early though. Get a good start. I like to start early. And I think as summer goes on, I'm going to keep starting earlier and earlier. I'll probably end up starting before the sun rises. Good stuff. Up here is a group that I've seen quite a bit. Morning guys. How are y'all doing? Good man. Ah, so I stopped and filled up with water and uh, took a few minutes to clean up and then uh, taking a few minutes to soak too. Ah, that cold water is heavenly. <clears throat> There's the trail right there. <laughs> Keep getting surprised by these little scenes. And somebody's having a whole lot of fun with this. <laughs> Get out, a group. Brad's going full on comfort today. Quarter to 12 and just a little piece away from the store. Made it to the Brushy Mountain store. <laughs> Trail shop. A bunch of hikers out here. I'm heading out for it. Yeah. So and, do you uh, have grandfathers or uh, fathers? <clears> I got a slip on my. Yeah. Slip on my sandals so I can go in. They have got. A, they've got a sign on the door. No shoes. No shirt. No service. So. Got to honor that. Ordered some Cajun fries. Yeah, I thought it looked like him too. The V8 juice. So sitting here eating lunch 
with a bunch of hikers and uh, very fortunate to have met this gentleman. This is Mr. Warren Doyle. Product placement. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by Arizona Mucho Mango. I just want you to know that. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. All right. So I just got a ride to and from the post office from Warren Doyle. And that was the most painless post office experience I've had. I was in and out of there in a flash. I wanted to take a look. This is Doughboy's. This is Doughboy's pack. So I'd say it's probably like 50 pounds or something. Anyway, finally getting ready to get back on trail. I think the trail's over there. And uh, it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I've had some fries, got resupplied, and uh, time to get back on the trail. Here's the trail right there. I just want to get a quick clip of this view right here. It's pretty amazing. It's Interstate 77 down there. Kind of wish I had just road walked at this point. <laughs> Because this little trail, I'm not sure if this actually even is the Appalachian Trail, but it's headed in the right direction. So we have to go, there's a blaze right there. We have to go across this Interstate 77. So I'm going to put both hands on the wheel and get myself down this hill. It's crazy. My advice is stay on the road right here if you come through here. Three forty-nine, and uh, I've been back in the woods for a while. Been chatting on the phone with Mrs. Shoes, checking email, and doing all those things. But uh, started raining a little bit. I'm welcoming, welcoming the moisture. Bring it on. It'll be nice to cool things off, soften the trail, and uh, replenish all the water sources. So I hope it comes a good one, really. It is 6 p.m. and I'm coming up on, I think I've done around 12 miles today so far. Um, so I'm still gonna be able to pull an average average day out of this guy. Um, even with my stop at the, stop to resupply. So uh, one thing that concerns me is that um, there's not much water through here. And so, um, I'm gonna have to s uh, make some plans to find something somewhere up ahead. And I may have to, uh, we'll see how it goes. I may have to hike into the night to, uh, to get some water. It's been very dry here and there's a, there's a spring up ahead on the map but the uh, comments on it say it's bone dry so I just looked up and there's a shelter 7.7 .7 miles from here and that one has water for sure and then also at eight miles there's a sh there's a uh, hostel just off the trail so it's an option if I uh, if I feel like I'm you know pushing it for water tonight then I can just uh, hit one of those spots. I can always just conserve too. And this is not cold soak my dinner, just eat something that's ready to go. I've got peanut butter and all sorts of things um, in my pack that I can just eat that don't need water to rehydrate, conserve my drinking water, and then just hit the shelter in the morning. That's an option too. So anyway, not too worried about it. Just thinking. All right, so I just, Solve the water dilemma, and uh, at mile 600.6, .6, there's a campsite on Virginia 611, and I called my hiking buddies who are ahead, and they said that there somebody had dropped 11 gallons of water there. There's 11 gallon jugs of water out there. So that is so awesome. I asked them if they would 
uh, stash one. And they said, sure. So I'm going to make it my mission to get there tonight and uh, camp out with them and take advantage of the water situation. So very grateful for whoever, whoever did that. I'm not sure what these are, but they look like kale or some kind of greens. They kind of making me hungry. <laughs> they don't look, they look kind of out of place too. There's a bunch of them up there. So I've got the, uh, I've got my dinner on to soak. I've got some vegan three bean chili. Pretty excited about that. Um, it's looking like I'll end up with about 15.7 for the day. And then I should get there, should get there around 9 p.m., maybe a little bit before. So pretty excited about that. Um, it's turned out to be a really good day. The uh, making up for all the slow time this morning on the rocks, you know, on the gravel. I had to travel on the road for a ways on the gravel. And then the, uh, the time that I spent in town for resupply and all that. So it puts me a little later... A little later in the day to stop but um, I'm happy nonetheless good stuff I'm 600 miles into the Appalachian Trail can you believe it I can't it's crazy very very happy to be here just past 600 miles and I've got seven tenths of a mile to make it down here to the um, campsite I'll check in when I get down here I may have to film my setup in the morning because I'm probably going to be setting up in the dark. But that's great because I get to try out my new light. I got in a, an Olight AAA, you know, a single AAA battery um, flashlight. I'm going to try that instead of the headlight. Um, Jupiter Hikes and um, Lint Hikes, both those guys um, claim that the, that works well for them better than a headlamp because they can hold it down closer to the ground and it kind of projects the shadows and they get a better sense of uh, the terrain so I bought one it was way cheaper than the headlight and uh, I was just curious wanted to try it out so I'm excited it's an Olight and I think it's a T3 or IT3 or something like that it's a little bitty thing I'll uh, I'll show it in my gear video for sure no, that's some trail magic. I'm at mile 600.9. And I'm going to try to find my friends.